So in my last video about the EP Ever MPP charge controller, the Tracer A series, I tested all of the functionality you can achieve with these two buttons and this fairly basic screen. But as you can see, it takes a while for this information to come round on this carousel here. And I mentioned in my last video that there is a better way of getting some of the information out using either the MT50 uh, external accessory screen which connects via the COM port there or via what's called Modbus and there's some graphics here about using the correct wire with your MPP charge controller but as we can see the connector is basically an RJ45 and it gives you the pinout here and for RS485 you basically just need B and A so that's pin 3 or 4 and 5 or 6 so that seems fairly straightforward and you can buy these RS485 USB adapters really cheaply on eBay. This one cost me 99p delivered from China and if we open it up we can see on the inside that this is a CH340 chip which you'll have seen before on Arduino clones so my laptop's already got the driver for this and then the other little chip in here let me get a bit closer so there's the ch340 usb serial adapter and below it there let me turn it round is a max 485 now that's a rs485 chip so effectively what we're doing here is going from USB to serial and serial to 485. Now if you're anything like me you'll have hundreds of these hanging around the place and uh, Cat5 or Cat5e, Cat6 even, network cable uh, with RJ45s on the end. So we know that that will fit in the COM port on the MPP charge controller. So all I now have to do is cut an end off and terminate it into that USB adapter. So looking at the end of the cable here, I need, what was it? Three or four or and five or six. Well, four is blue and six is green, so they should be easy to identify. So I'm gonna use those two. So there we are, green and blue, and I'm just going to tin these wires with a bit of solder because they're very fine. So with those wires tinned, uh, the manual says number four is B. Well, that's blue in my example, so that's going to be on this side of the adapter and green on the other side. Okay, so that's done. I've put a bit of electrical tape around the wire to give it a bit of strain relief because, like I said, those are fairly delicate wires. Right then, so on the EP Solar website, if we go to Technical Support and Downloads um, and click the Software tab here, we can see this monitor software right at the top. 1.2 is the current version, uh, last July, and we'll download that. Now, unfortunately, this downloads as a RAR file, so you will need WinRAR, or I prefer 7-zip, which opens RAR files quite happily. So with that WinRAR file on my desktop, I can right-click, and in the 7-zip menu, I can extract to a folder. And in that folder is uh, a couple of other folders, but the EP Ever setup is the one that I'm interested in. So we're going to install the program in its normal place and give it permission to install and close. Alright, next up I'm going to plug in my USB RS485 
485 adapter plug that in and if I just check in device manager it's showing up as Comport 5 so if I start the solar station monitor so the first thing it's asking me to do is set up some information for the controller um, COM5 perfect uh, station information so we'll give it a name tracer A device ID is the Modbus device ID and I believe these are all as standard number one so we're in West Yorkshire here and we're in the shed contact Adam don't really need any of this I've only got 150 watts of solar panel and my battery voltage is 12 volts and it's about 160 amp hours PV array type mono 150 watts one string um, peak power 150 I think that will do battery this is where it's asking if we're a sealed gel or a flooded. I'm going to leave mine at sealed for the moment. Um, 12 volt battery. None of this is required. It doesn't have Ascaris. So I'm just going to add at that point and exit and expand this window. And as you can see on the left hand side under COM port 5 we've got my tracer A and some information on the right hand side let's bring that down a bit start monitor excellent so straight away we can see my array today is at 35 volts uh, no amps coming in at the moment we've got a battery at 13.76 the max and min, the battery current, the temperature will be wrong because I haven't got a temperature sensor in there. And the load information as well. Oh and look, on the right hand side we've got the device temperature. 14.5 degrees. Um, so that's information you don't get on the screen. And of course all this information is de being displayed all the time. Let's see how live this is and turn on the load. There you go, you can see that lamp came on. Turn it off again. Okay, so I've adjusted the brightness slightly and we'll bring this panel back up again. And we can see a graph. And we can see the solar array voltage is just under 35 volts. And the battery voltage here is, well, it says about 14, I guess. Uh, which is about right. There's also some energy generated um, bits here on the left hand side. So that's the voltage graph. We can also see current. So we can see the current coming from the solar panels, the current coming taken from the battery, presumably. Or is that going into the battery? Um, I know. Let's turn the load on and see what happens. Okay, so that was current going into the battery because now I've got a great deal of current coming out of the battery. And we can also see that the load has increased, mirroring the battery current there. Turn it off again. And in a few seconds, the load should come back down again. There we go. And the last tab on the graph section is power so that's showing the power real-time curve in watts so there's lots of interesting information there on screen you can get uh, across the Modbus RS485 cable but let's see what else we can change I'm guessing in parameter device parameters so there's a real-time clock in there can we read that from the solar charge controller 
operation succeeded so that is set to the right time and we can also see device parameter settings okay so that shows um, over temperatures and under temperatures protection uh, there in the device parameter settings and device ID um, we can change its Modbus ID there I think and com settings well that's pretty boring but those are the com settings that are default I believe which is a uh, 1015-200-81N And sorry, it's a bit windy in the shed today, so the camera's shaking around a little bit. The control parameter. Now, this is an interesting section. Let's read the information from the solar charge controller. So you can see it's set to gel, which I did in my last video. But I think actually now I want to change it to user. And the reason I want to do that is I'm not so keen on this equilibrium charging at 14.6 I'm going to bring that voltage down somewhat and the boost voltage charge 14 minus sealed batteries and I like to keep them fairly low voltage I don't like to run them too hard happy with float at 13.8 um, Charging limit voltage, I think I'll bring that down, don't want it ever to go above 14.5. Boost duration in minutes, so we'll change that to just an hour and the equilibrium to an hour as well. Um, now you can change this charging mode as voltage compensation or state of charge and you can just say bring me up to 80% but I'm never convinced about state of charge monitors so I'll leave that as voltage compensation so I think I'm fairly happy with those voltages for now if I update input cannot be blank I can't see an a blank input there perhaps it's this one 12 there we go update did that update read hmm now that doesn't seem to be working properly. Let's close that one down. Parameter, control parameter, read. Also, it did write it. It just didn't give me any confirmation that it did write it. But those are all the correct details. So all this information you can do on the laptop is really interesting, I think. These power curves will be very interesting to see how my solar setup works on a normal day and... Um, when I get the power, when I get the most power, that sort of thing. And all this information is really useful, but that seems a bit daft to have to run a laptop all day to get this information. So I'm wondering if it's possible to do it another way, possibly with Arduino or Raspberry Pi, something like that, and log that information um, into a spreadsheet or a CSV file so I can put it into Excel later. So that's something I hope to um, look into in the future. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe down below if you can. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.